Hello, my name is John Adelot, and today I'm going to do a short video on focus stacking. Uh, years ago, shooting a view camera, if we needed to get uh, close uh, depth of field and stuff like that, uh, uh, we, uh, as well as infinity in the same shot, and we had our swings and our tilts that worked uh, quite well. And also we could stop down, but with the advent of digital camera, um, you start stopping down, uh, get more diffraction in your lens, and, uh, and well, let's say you don't even have an expensive lens, and uh, you have a mid-range lens, and uh, f8 is the sharpest point on your lens, uh, or five six or something, and you want to use that point to get as sharp and an ultimate sharp image as you can. Therefore, uh, we have focus stacking where you take a near focus. Uh, Maybe a mid-focus and a far-focus. Uh, I've done as many as four foot different focuses in my process. But uh, uh, that's just a real simple, quick video to show you how it's done, show you uh, uh, not necessarily the end results, but right now I've selected uh, two images uh, already here, right here in, uh, in Bridge. Now these images have been worked over um, in you know my basic first thing in camera raw and instead of opening them I just clicked done and so from bridge if you go up here to uh, tools and go down to Photoshop right there and then load files into Photoshop layers this saves you having to cut and paste but you can do it manually too it doesn't matter and the files are uh, coming into Photoshop now and there's one of them and there's the second one coming up now now it no matter how many files there are the procedure is the same usually when it's done loading the top file is selected if you just shift click on the bottom file it will select all of the files and this is where people will pitfall sometimes and looking for the next step and they haven't done that you got to do that or it won't even show up here so now you're going to go up to the edit menu and go down to auto align layers. Click on auto align layers and you want right here auto all of them right on top of each other and don't worry about it nothing else checked and just hit OK. Now this goes through and aligns the layers. Sometimes you'll see a little line around the edge and you know things like that. Don't worry about it at this point. We're going to take care of that in a bit. Um, that's why you need to keep your camera as rock solid as possible when you shoot this. And it doesn't have to be absolutely. As a general rule, you should lock down your focus. So uh, like a manual focus, so you can focus your near ground, your foreground. Um, I run my camera completely manual. And uh, probably the best way if you want to be in total control. The next thing you do with all of them, both um, both layers still selected, you go back up again to edit, and you go to auto blend layers. Make sure you click on stack images, seamless tones and colors, and hit OK. And there it goes. It's going to do all the work for you. And if you see on the right, we got a couple of masks, and you can see obviously the bottom layer is the foreground layer and the top layer is the background layer. It doesn't matter which way they are. The only thing is, Photoshop doesn't do a super good job. So if I go here and I just take my foreground and unclick it, if you'll notice around the edges of the image, I have a lot right here of the background layer. So, and I probably don't want the focus for the background layer so much in here. And Look, I got a hole over here, and that probably should be in the background layer and not in the foreground layer. So, we also have a little thing over here, a little bit of uh, sky missing and stuff like that. So, the first thing we do, we're going to start here on this layer. We're going to click on the mask of the top layer, which is our background layer, and I'm going to choose white. I'm going to pick a brush. Yeah, 126, 70, that's fine. And I'm just going to go across the top and see if I can get back a little bit of my image. And I did. Okay. Now, 
I'm gonna go over mm, here. I'm gonna pick the. I'm gonna pick the black. Okay. I'm gonna pick the white. Still. Okay. Go over here. Pick the white. And I'm gonna put the layer back in here. Maybe over here too, if it's there. Now I'm gonna change over to the black. And I'm going to take this out. Okay. And this is probably... The focus would not be good in there at all. Okay. I mean, it's just as simple as that. And probably... Well, pretty close in there. I'm going to take this and this. And maybe go up I'm going to take a little spot right there. I'll just take that too. Okay, right. Got to kind of keep a fine eye at things, you know? Okay. Now, I'm going to turn on the foreground layer. And, of course, it shows me, hey, I don't have anything in these places. Well, no, because it was masked out. So, if we go over here... And we're just going to turn and get the white layer again. This, and I'm going to uh, uh, kind of paint this back in so I have it. Okay. Oops, uh. And it makes it a pretty simple process. It's not a fully automatic process in Photoshop, but leave it to those engineers. Pretty soon, one of these days, it will be a very, very good fully automatic process. But I don't mind doing a little work to get a great image, and I'm sure uh, I'm sure you're the same way. Just get a little bit there, and a little bit up here. Need. Like that. Spot. There it is. And a little more. Okay. And we could spill over with the foreground layer. It's not that important. Now, from this point. I would expand the image, I'd go in, I would look at it closely, and then I'm going to go on to work in Photoshop. Now, Photoshop, I've already done a lot of work in, in, in Camera Raw, but most of my images, I still do more work in Photoshop.